Good morning, Lunsford Lions. Today we are going to be doing water quality testing. The sample that we chose came from a local pond here in South Riding. It's the pond on Crossfield Drive that has the fishing pier. Um, the community had built that pier um, and has stocked the lake with fish to encourage um, catch and release fishing. And we're gonna test to see if it's a healthy environment for those fish as well as the other animals that use it as a water source. This is a picture of the pond where the water sample was collected. You can see that the surface of the water has a film on it from algae and it's pretty turbid. The water travels downstream into a little river through those little pipes you see at the end and comes out the other side looking a bit cleaner thanks to the wetland area. Here in this orange bucket I have a sample of the pond water and as you can see there is a large variety of algae there is some sediment in there and a thermometer because we're going to be taking the temperature in just a moment. The first thing we're going to test is temperature. And temperature is important to aquatic ecosystems because it can impact the amount of dissolved oxygen in the water, how quickly plants can perform photosynthesis, and how much pollution plants and animals can tolerate. Now this water sample has been in the uh, classroom for a couple of days now, so I expect the water to be around room temperature, and it is, and you can see right there that it's about 24 degrees Celsius. When I got it from the outside, it was a little bit cooler than that because it was a little bit of a cold day that day and it was closer to about um, 16 to 18 degrees Celsius. Next, we're gonna talk about dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen is important to an aquatic ecosystem because all aquatic animals like fish need oxygen to survive. Low levels of dissolved oxygen make it hard for these animals to breathe, which can lead to sickness and even death. Dissolved oxygen is measured in parts per million, or ppm. That tells you that if you have 15 ppm, that means out of every 1 million molecules, 15 would be um, whatever it is that you're looking at. So when I look at my dissolved oxygen vial, next to the dissolved oxygen card here, and it's really kind of hard to see. It's not quite zero, it's not perfectly clear, and it's definitely not four. So we would say that the dissolved oxygen in this water sample is between zero and four. So we would just pick a number, maybe we'll say this one is a two. Another test we did is for pH. pH is a measurement of the acidic or basic quality of water. Most organisms are adapted to life at a certain pH, and even slight changes up or down can result in death. When we look at our sample, we can see it's a nice bright color. So it's between a seven and eight, we would call this a seven and a half. If it were a lower number, it would be considered too basic, and if it were too high, it would be considered acidic. Fresh water likes to keep it between seven and eight. The next test we conducted on our water sample from the fishing pond was nitrates. Now nitrate is a nutrient that all aquatic plants and animals need in order to grow. Too much nitrate can overstimulate plant growth, especially algae. As the algae die, organisms that feed on dead algae use up all the oxygen in the water, which can kill other animals. This is also measured in parts per million. And if we look at the color and we can compare the color of our sample to the color on the card, we can see that our nitrate level is about a five, maybe less. Another test we did was for phosphates. Phosphate, like nitrate, is a nutrient that all aquatic plants and animals need in order to grow. Excess phosphate can also lead to explosive growth in algae, which will eventually lead to an extreme decrease in dissolved oxygen. And if we look here, our phosphate number looks like it's about one part per million. Another test we did was for turbidity. Now turbidity tells us the relative clarity of the water. Water that is turbid has a lot of suspended particles like dirt and sand. These particles can block sunlight and make it hard for plants to perform photosynthesis, which puts oxygen back into the water. Now this water sample came from our orange bucket which came where the water came from the pond, and you can see because it's been sitting still, the sediments have settled. What we need to do is we need to watch this circle right here. I'm gonna stir the sediment to get it to suspend in the water, and we're gonna compare it to the turbidity section on our card. If it's crystal clear, it'll be zero JTU. That would be like drinking water. If it's about 
if you it, you know, if you can kind of see it, it's about 40 JTU. And if it disappears almost completely, it'd be 100 JTU. So let's stir and see what happens. All right. Well, it's definitely not clear like drinking water, but I'm not sure it's up to level 40. It's definitely not 100. I might say that the turbidity of this water is maybe a 20 JTU. The final test we did on our water sample was to test for coliform. And as you can see, it's definitely positive for coliform. Now this is not an unexpected result because all sorts of fish, turtle, frogs, aquatic birds, not to mention mammals, use that pond for a water source or for their habitat. Coliform is testing to see if there's feces in the water. And again, we expected it to be positive. All the tests we did today came from this Lamotte water monitoring kit. It came with everything we needed, including the vials, the tablets, and very easy to understand instructions. Okay, so that was all the tests that we have. Just to remind you that every single test that we did today involved the same sample of water from the same pond. We just took it from the pond to the orange bucket to the vial following the directions in our water testing kit. It changed colors because it had a chemical reaction with the tablet that we put into it, which made it easier for us to understand how much of each type of chemical or compound was actually in the water.